Hello everybody and welcome to today's Gamers Save Point. Today we're going to be going over the, all the news that's happened in the last four weeks weeks, and doing some big stuff for um, the later half of June uh, uh, to the midway point of July, which means today obviously. And that, then um, we'll, f we'll go over the over them in three sections. The first section will be the juicy parts, as always. For those who don't know and have missed the last two, this is where we talk about all the big news, like stuff that generated a lot of buzz, stuff that really resonated with people, uh, people, and stuff that, well, just really got everybody talking about it. Got it. And this is anywhere from news announcements to updates on games, games that are pretty significant. So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, now, of course, I will separate these into three different categories. Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, obviously. They covering each of their company's news individually. And then I will talk about news specific to all three platforms at the end. And then we will cover PC C in terms of well any upcoming releases of course. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we'll go into the tid bits. Uh uh the or as I like to call them, the mini bits, where we basically go over all the little details. Details that uh Pretty much happening. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And then finally, we will finish it off with um, an update from us Go Gamers. And I got some news to drop in terms of upcoming stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright guys, so we're going to go over the juicy parts like we always do, and I already have most of the announcements up, so let's go over uh, for the bigger ones. So, first things first, Ubisoft, as you can uh, see on the screen here, has officially announced Far Cry 6, uh, and it will be coming to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, X uh, and of course, uh, PlayStation 4, and Xbox. Xbox One, as well as PC, via the Epic Store, you play, and it will also be coming to Stadia. And it launches next year on February 18th. Um, so for those who order Far Cry 6 on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, will be able to upgrade, upgrade to the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X version, version at no annual cost. And there will be the following special editions for these games. So, the Gold Edition will include the base game and the Seasons Pass. S, and uh, the Ultimate Version will include, uh, include everything that the Gold Edition has, plus the Ultimate Pack, which includes the Jungle Exploration, the Clock Hunter Pack, and the Vice Pack. And then the Collector's Edition includes everything from those first two, two, plus a high-end replica of Torda, an in-game flamethrower weapon, seven uh, pieces to be assembled, length, uh, 72 centimeters, and how to assemble one-page artwork illustrated by, by an artist uh, that uh, is working on the game. Um, a unique collector's case based on uh, uh, artist Tobin. I hope I said that right. Uh, it's Ionic art style, an exclusive steel book, a 64 page art book, a sheet of 10 stickers, a chiseling, a map, and a selected soundtrack. For those who don't know what selected is, basically tracks, tracks. From the game that was selected, uh, selected by Ubisoft themselves. Yes. Um, I would tell you guys more about this, about this, but for those who are longtime Far Cry fans, fans probably don't want to get too spoiled, and I don't want to spoil anybody whose first Far Cry it is. So I'll leave a link in the description below 
below so you guys can check out more information about the uh, about Far Cry 6 since this game has been rumored to be coming for a long time. So I figured you guys will probably want to read it up on yourselves. So, so, yeah. Alright, next up, we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed Von Hala, which we got a lot of information to break down, so, yeah. All right, guys. All right, so Ubisoft has officially annou announced when uh, Assassin's Creed Van Hall will be coming to uh, uh, all consoles that they previously announced. So uh, it's going to be coming November 17th to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Stadia. Uh, and it will be coming soon to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, probably a little bit after launch. Launch more than likely. So, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you'll be able to, your Endor, a fierce, a fierce Viking warrior, warrior, raised by tales of battle and glory. Oi. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm not going to go any more farther with the rest of the story since I don't want you to. But here are some of the other things that you can do inside the game. Aim. Uh, advanced role-playing mechan mechanics uh, will allow you, you to shape the growth of your character and influence the world around you. With each uh, a choice you make, uh, make, uh, you... From political alliances and combat strategy to dialogue and gear progression, you will carve your own path to glory. Uh, this is a very diverse combat system, and you'll be able to dual wield lots of weapons, such as axes, swords, and even shields. Shields in the ruthless fighting style of the Viking warriors. You can obviously attack head on. You can uh, vanquish them from afar. Probably with the shield and axes, since you can't really get that far with the sword. Uh, or, like all real assassin games, you can stealthily assassinate your targets with your hidden blade. Interesting. Um, you'll be able to launch massive assaults against Saxon troopers and forts throughout England. Lead your channel in surprise attacks from your longship and purge enemy territories to bring riches and resources back to your people. Um, one of the cool things about this game is that you'll actually be able to build your own settlement. So you will be able to construct and upgrade buildings that will allow for deep customization. Including barricades, blacksmiths, tattoo powers, and more. So, you'll, yeah. And then, obviously, you can create a, a unique... Uh, you can create and customize a unique uh, Viking raider within your clan and share it online line with friends to use during their own raids. Interesting. Interesting. I'll leave a link in the description below to both the trailer, trailer and the Finderman gameplay overview view of the game itself. So, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting, to say the least. Okay, so the next one is Watch Dog Legions. Watch Dog Legions, Legions will launch on X, uh, will launch on Xbox One, NPC, Eevee at the Epic Game Store, and Yuba Play, as well as Stadia, on October 29th. And PlayStation 4, 4 as well on October 29th. Nice. It will also be coming to Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. When? I don't know. Oh. But those who do purchase Watch Dog Legions, or Legions on either PlayStation 4 or Xbox 4 will be able to upgrade to the newer systems at no annual cost. Cost. I'm only going to detail two, uh, two or three of these details, so, yeah. Okay, so, oh, continuing on. On, uh, you'll be able to play as anyone. 
anyone. Yes. Yes, you'll be able to play as a hacker, a getaway driver, a football organ, and even an old lady, which you've shown us several times. So this will be very interesting, and to say the least. And you can team up with friends uh, up to three in online multiplayer as you freely explore learning together or take on special co-op missions and unique game modes. And there will be regular free updates, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, without further ado, dude, that is all from Ubisoft's conference, so I will continue, continue on talking about what other news drops here and there that air uh, throughout this day before this day. Of course, of course, if the Nintendo Direct does drop before I'm finished with this video, video I will add it in, in but um, for the time being, being that is not the case, so... Uh, Gonna take a small break, break here from recording, and I will be back to finish up the rest of the video. Alright guys, I'm back, and I got some more stuff to talk about, so let's get to it. So next up, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition's last, uh, the launch date. Uh, yeah. Let me try that again. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition for PC's launch date. It will be launching August 7th. Evan, with ultra-wide support, unlocked frame rates, to meet foliage, whatever that means, and more. Uh, and it will include both the, uh, both the base game and the expansion pack for Frozen Wilds, um, and some additional stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It will be launching for $4 and, uh, $40 and 99 cents. Um, um, and, uh, yeah. So, basically, that is the g general gist. So, again, last year on PC, uh, PC version, complete edition, will include both the base game and... And the Frozen Wilds expansion pack. Um, and in addition to that, that you will also have ultra wide support, so it will support uh, ultra wide screens, um, um, unlocked frame rates, which obviously means 60 frame rates per second and such, uh, dramatic foliage, graphical customization, improved reflections, obviously, you can control uh, options, and a benchmarking tool. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, that's all that the complete edition will offer. Again, it's gonna be available on August seventh for four, uh, for fifty dollars basically. So yeah, uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I will leave a link to the Steam page below so you guys can pre-order if you want to. Um, but let's get on to the next juicy tidbit that I have for you guys today. So during the new Game Plus Expo, a couple big and small announcements were announced. And amongst one of them near the end was Yutz 9. And the Night Fist Dominant in the famous Yutz role-playing scene. Uh, role-playing series. It's not a very well-known series amongst, uh, I guess, RPGists. Sorry if I offended any of you guys. Guys, but I haven't heard of this series. I uh, haven't heard of this series. Heck, I didn't even hear about it until its previous installment, Yurts 8. 8 on uh, uh, PlayStation 4, and then later released for the Switch. Which, though, I think it was at the same time, actually, now that I think of it. Either way, way the series' ninth installment, which was released in 2009 in Japan, is coming over to the West next year. Yeah, it will be released for the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and Steam, and, uh, and it will and uh, is pre-orders available for a special limited edition edition for the Switch and the PlayStation Four version version for a hundred dollars. Yeah, hefty price tag. Woo! Um, um, and it includes the pack edition of the game. Aim the my monster um. M memories, mini art booklet, melodies of the Makayasa, 
uh, one sample original soundtrack sampler, reverse cover sheet, chains and chakra one disc soundtrack, on uh, nails and a uh, uh, coffin hot cover art book. Look, the last souls, souls, a yes nine sequel short novel, uh, the Crimson King chibi figure. The monstrous and the Becu uh, um, art car collection. Baku's most wanted key e chain set and a Maslum box. Whew! That was a mouthful. Oh, to say and to talk about. Um, I will leave a link in the description below to the trailer, Ella, so you guys can check it out for yourselves, as well as a link to the website where you can pre-order the special edition. I'm not sure if it's still up, but you guys can check it out for yourselves there. Alright, now it's about time I got around to this announcement. Quote, unquote. Quote, anybody who already knows about what I'm referencing to probably always heard this, but in case the news hasn't already been spread out. It's about time I'm Crash that you got a brand new game. <laughs> That's right, Crash 4, it's about time. I'll leave some links in the blo uh, below in the description to clear up the confusion about that one. Uh, it's coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, one later this fall. fall. The game takes place directly after Crash 3, and is staying true to pretty much the roots of the first three games. Uh, unlike the, yeah, no, and the branching path that we got. Uh, uh, the game will launch on October 2nd for $59.99. Nine, so, usual retail price. Uh, so, definitely one that I am super excited about. I was super happy to see. Um, we don't know too much about the game at the moment. Moment. And I don't want to uh, uh, spoil too much for a long time Clash fans who have been waiting for a new Clash game in such a long time. So I'm going to leave a link to the in the description below to both the press release from um, Aquavision and the trailer, trailer and gameplays that we've seen so far for Clash. So... Definitely check that out if you haven't already. Oh, snap! A brand new Pokemon Snap! Uh, no, you, you, you're not dreaming, guys. A brand new, new Pokemon Snap app has been announced. Now, it's unknown whether this is a remake of the N64 Classic or the sequel. So, I'm not about to say anything. And for all I know, that working title, New Pokemon Snap, could just be a WIP, Working Title, po Working Progress title. I'll be surprised if it's finally called Pokemon Snap. The final title is New Pokemon Snap. That's not the first time Nintendo's done that. <laughs> it's my anybody. <coughs> uh, but I'm interested to see where this game goes. Um, it's actually being developed by Bandai Namco, shockingly. Lee, although not shockingly, considering they're also helping us out with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and apparently they helped out with Mario Kart 8. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Either until I looked it up. Oh, huh, small world. Well, the better name goes been pretty involved with the Switch. Both with our own and in with Nintendo. So yeah. Um Um this is this of course brings gameplay of the original Pokemon Snap for the N sixty four. So I'll leave a link link to the trailer in the description below. Well, and I'll keep you guys posted on more details on when this new game snaps into things. Oh, and one more quick thing. Uh, about culture capture, speaking of pictures, um, you probably have noticed that we haven't done one for June or July yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because I decided that it would be a great idea to wrap up the entire summer and one little summer instead of multiple ones. 
So, oh, for the summer, we'll be doing one huge recap at near the end of August, talking about all the big news that dropped dropped during the summer, and I have a good feeling that it's going to be about worlds. Anyways, back on topic. Next one has a lot to do with Kingdom Hearts. Well, it's kind of Kingdom Hearts on Switch, but not in the way you guys are expecting, unfortunately. <laughs> so don't get too excited. Kingdom Hearts Magical Me um, SI Medley of Memory is coming to Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation Station uh, sometime in 2020. They didn't specify a release date. Uh, in this game, game you'll be uh, you'll be moving to the beat eat with your feet eat to over 140 of uh, songs from Kingdom Hearts. The Disney series, Disney catalog in general, and so, so, so much more. I wouldn't be shocked if they squeezed in some Final Fantasy here and there. There are going to be four modes, including online battles. Um, I will leave a link to in the description below. Oh, well, oh, but in my personal opinion, this kind of reminds me a lot about that one game. Ah, uh, it's slipping my mind. That game Fleet being on the 3DS. Uh, oh, Hormono Night. That's it. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting total Hormono Night vibes from this. So this should be nothing new to at least me. Of course, gameplay-wise, it's totally different, but eh, this is something I'm not used to. Used to. Hopefully it doesn't too, it isn't too hard. hard. Uh, of course, this does mean that due to copyright, I will not be able to, heads up in advance, record gameplay for the channel, guys. Sorry, sorry, but uh, Disney stuff is very risky. Risky sometimes, depending on the topic. And since this is some of the most popular stuff that's probably going to be mixed in here, I don't want to take any chances. Kingdom Hearts stuff, I'm not 100% sure on, so I'll do a test over on my personal channel channel to see what happens. Happens to them, so I'll at least do some stuff with Kingdom Hearts music. But in terms of Disney, I'm dodging like the plague. So just a small heads up, I do plan to pick this game up, up just for I let you guys know. Alright, the next one is, uh, the next one I was going to talk about, but like I said, I'm going to specify, I decided to change my mind, and I decided to specify on stuff for all three platforms, and then I'll go into the specific platforms, platforms afterwards, just to make it easier for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Our next announcement has to do with the upcoming Tales of Arise, so just a heads up. And no, it's sadly not new details, it's actually a, a little bit of a bummer news. Sorry, guys. Unfortunately, guys, for those who are fans of the Tales series, and it is a bit of sort of good news, news if you're a fan of a certain Tales game, um, Tales of the Lies has unfortunately been delayed to who knows when. When. Uh, Bandai Namco did not specify a, d a release date, but it's no longer coming in 2021. One. Uh, I do have good new, uh, news, though, for those who need a title in the meantime. A new game that's been out in Japan for a while for the Tales series called Tales of... Probably gonna mess this one up. Uh, Kavada? Tales fans, feel free to correct me below, below, because I have no idea what this one's like. But, um, uh, that game has just officially launched in the U.S., so, um, I'll leave a link in the description below, below to, um, some more information about that game in specific. Fix and I will leave you a link in the description below to a statement that Bandai Namco put out about Tales of the Eyes if you want to check that one out too. Uh, but that's just a brief update. Alright, let's move on to the next topic. We're almost done with the juicy tidbits and then we're going to get into uh, stuff specific to each system. System, so Sony, Microsoft, and then Nintendo announcements. So, for Persona fans, 
fans of Persona 4, I got some good news. Persona 4 Golden is now available on PC. It was shadow dropped during the PC gaming show. Although it was late beforehand. Um, and... And it is now available to play on PC. And shockingly enough, there's all your mods for it. Huh. Can't say I'm surprised, considering how fast the second community is behind that stuff. But, uh, yeah. Finally, good to, uh, finally have at least one Persona game on PC. Get Persona 3 and Persona 4 by B next. We'll wait and see. Um, but either way... Way, um, I will leave a link to the Steam Play, uh, to... Uh, to the Steam uh, page so you guys can check it out. Uh, I don't want to explain too much because this is it's an RPG and you guys guys are uh, fans who have been waiting for to play a personal game on PC probably want to go into this this blind so I'll just leave a link to the Steam page but yeah Persona 4 Golden is now available on PC. And finally, last but not least, Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, this is going to be coming to all all consoles but Switch, uh, PC, EC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Uh, it will be launching October 2nd via Steam and Origin. Um, and it will support cross-play across all platforms. And it can also be played in its entirely via virtual reality headset. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I will leave a link in the description below to the PlayStation, Xbox, and PC EC pre-order pages uh, so you guys can meet up on it. And I will leave a link in the description below also for the trailer so you guys can check it out. Yeah, at this point, I might need to make a playlist of everything I talked about, too, just uh, so I can fit in all the other small stuff. Uh, okay, so that is all... All for um, this, let's head back to the main uh, in intro page so I can introduce the next section of our uh, Game of State Point. Alright guys, so now it's time to talk about all three companies individually in terms of the new news individually. So first things first, we're going to be talking about, about all third party announcements exclusive to that branch of uh, uh, that system only. So to the PlayStation 4 and 5, exclusive for that system only. Um, this will not include the PlayStation uh, reveal event stuff. We've already talked about that in a previous game, game of save point, so um, I don't need to go into any more details about it. About it. But um, for those who uh, want to see our previous one on that, I will leave a link in the description below to that game of save point. This is everything that happened after that. Um, um, but I will be going over any clarifications for po and any other stuff that is specific to the PlayStation platform in terms of third party announcements and then anything from Sony themselves. Uh, then, same thing with Microsoft, I will be going over details specifically to the Microsoft platform only, so that includes uh, window, Windows and PC, and uh, Xbox Series X, as well as Xbox One. One, And we got some pretty significant news in that category, so yes. Um, then, we have Nintendo, who has actually been on the quiet side very much lately, so I will be pretty much only talking about, uh, our new Smash character, in case you haven't heard already. Ready, and, uh, basically any third party announcement, so. Yeah, it's been real quiet. No, no Nintendo, no nothing. Um, but we still do got some pretty significant news in that category, so, yeah. Yeah, it, ha it has to do with um, a certain indie that's been very close to Nintendo for a long, long time. So that's all I'm going to say, say for the time being, but uh, yeah. Alright, so first things first. first. Uh, let's talk about um, PlayStation, since that seems to be the most popular platform at the moment due to the upcoming PlayStation 5 and everybody's talking about about what's going to be a lot of shadow and what's not. So, um, yeah. Let's talk about the PlayStation uh, 5 first. 
of of the site that I say five I mean four and five. Five note this will not be talking about we will not be talking about Ghost of Shiba Shiba or anything like that out on here. This is stuff about upcoming games only. Only so yeah. Um but without further ado, let's talk about some PlayStation stuff, shall we? So I guess the first thing we should talk about is what this month's PlayStation Now games and PlayStation Plus games are for this month in terms of new, uh, uh, new additions. So for PlayStation Now, for those who are subscribed to that service, we have three new games. One that's going to be available until October. And then two that are going to be staying ongoing access. So we have Hello Neighbor. Neighbor, uh, this game comes from... Uh, this game is a stealth horror game about sneaking into your neighbor's house to figure out what secrets he is hiding in the basement. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Then we also have Street Fighter V. Five. Uh, by the way, you guys will be getting the arcade edition. Edition. If you already own Street Fighter Five, Five currently, you got a free update to the arcade edition, which is what most people own, even if you have a base Street Fighter Five game. Game. So from this point forward, anybody who has base Street Fighter Five, Five has the arcade edition, which is available via a free update. Date. Uh, but if you've been meaning to uh, try out Street Fighter Five for the first time, or try out the brand new champion. In addition, which you can get get if you only have uh, base Street Fighter Five in some capacity, uh, or Street Fighter Five Arcade Edition in some capacity, you can basically upgrade, upgrade to get the uh, all the additional DLC except for the Capcom Pro Tool stuff uh, that you start to buy individually, due to it being sponsored. And said so, yeah. But other than that, it includes all the DLC in the game as of current. This doesn't include upcoming DLC. This is at the time of release for Championship Edition. So if any additional DLC has come out, then um, you're going to have to buy that on your own, I'm afraid. Hey, sorry. Oh, right, but, um, yeah. And then finally, we have Watch Dogs 2, which will be available to download and stream uh, on PlayStation 5. Uh, PlayStation 4 and PC. Yes, there's a PC client. Uh, uh, but you won't be able to stream on the PC client. Just a heads up. Um, uh, till October 5th. So you have basically three months from now. Now to uh, play Watch Dogs 2 on your PlayStation, uh, uh, PlayStation 4 if you haven't already. Of course, this does mean, just for heads up, who are subscribers to our channels, uh, channel, and oh, this does mean that Music Clues, uh, this one is going on my Music Clues tries list, since I have been meaning to try Watch Dogs 2, so be sure to keep an eye out for Music Clues tries Watch Dogs 2. Whether that comes to Go Gamers Unlocked, or this channel will be made to be seen, because... Uh, I'm not sure the amount of swearing this one has, so, um, yeah, just a small heads up. But other than that, that, uh, expect the Music Clues tries Watch Dogs 2 in the future. For, uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, that is all for now. Now, this is yours truly, uh, oh, wait, I'm not done yet. <laughs> we still got more to talk about. Uh, what am I doing? Say sorry, guys. It's been a long week. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm recording this the day before I go back to work, which is tomorrow. So, uh, if I seem a little rushed, that's why. Uh, but the next one is actually pretty significant in terms of Miku. Miku, and yes, I am fully aware we have a second DLC for Mega Mix, but that's not what I meant, meant in terms of uh, Miku. Miku. This is actually regarding Project Diva Future Tone Tone DLC. Yes, you heard me. Future Tone DLC. See, so uh, this has been a bit long since Future Tone got DLC. I think the last time Future Tone actually got any type of DLC was... When was the last time it did? Let me take a look here real quick. Uh, 
Okay, so the last time it got DLC, uh, it got some DLC in general was last year, but in terms of actual, actual DLC, DLC, um, the last time it actually got some actual DLC, see, in terms of new songs was, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. Ah, here we go. Uh, the last time it actually added some actual DLC for the extra Encore pack, I think, I believe. Leaf, I believe that included some songs. I'm sorry, guys. I had to look last minute. Ah, yep, it did include songs. So the extra Encore DLC was 2017. So it's actually been a couple years since we've actually seen DLC. See, and I do mean actual DLC. See, because the last couple updates have just added um, extreme, uh, extra extreme charts to several songs. Not really anything of significant notice. Those, those, but um, yeah. Uh, before I continue talking, let's switch over to the Patrick Diva pick. Pick, shall we? Sorry for a bit of my rambling there about Miku. Miku, when it comes to uh, anything licensed or owned by Sega, I tend to go off on a ramble. <laughs> uh, but anyways, for those who don't know what Project Diva Future Tone is, and I'll briefly explain Mega Mix too, too, since this DLC is about it. Um, Project Diva Future Tone, Tone is um, basically a port of pretty much almost all Miku songs from previous Project Diva games across the PlayStation P. Across the, uh, 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 uh. Let me try it uh, again from the start. Uh, Project Diva Future Tone is basically somewhat of a compilation of all Project Diva games across the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, full home console systems, and the PSP and Vista home consoles. Uh, portable systems. Uh, since Project Diva Eva itself actually started starting on the PSP originally. So, um, as Project Diva and then was followed up by Project Diva second. 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 So, um, yeah, and then the rest is history. Uh, so Project Diva Future Tone is basically a, a compilation of all the best songs, songs from that one. Now, Mega Mix is somewhat of a toned-down version of that, but with a tune shader added on top of it. Top of it. And it includes a brand new song, song for the game, and called Catch the Wave. Wave, which was made previously only exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. There was no way to put it over unless you could mod it into the game itself. So, oh, uh, but uh, thanks to some ingenuity, Sega actually brought it over over to Future Tone, originally only in Japan. Pan. However, out of nowhere, Sega also dropped it, dropped it here in the U.S. Let's so fans can pick it up for fourteen dollars. The dollars if they want all the Mega Mix so songs as well. Well, um, as for the Mega Mix DLC, I have nothing on that at the moment, moment, but hopefully Sega will drop that soon, too soon. I feel like they will, will eventually, eventually when they announce the, uh, for those who didn't know, know and have owned Mega Mix, there will be another wave of DLC for Mega Mix. They've announced in Japan, Pan, I already have the Japan copy of Project Me, uh, Project, uh, Project uh, Diva Mega Mix called Mega 39s, nines in Japan, and uh, I have played a little bit of it. It's hot as heck. Woo! Oh, and by the way, for those who are new to Project Diva, there is no easy version of the chat, so better get good. And I do mean it. Because <laughs> uh, these second songs are easy. Trust me. That's me. I know. I played all three. Uh, but yeah. So here are the songs that are included. Included with the Future Tone DLC. Uh, uh, DLC. So... Oh, you get, obviously, Catch the Wave. 39 Music. 
Alien Alien, T.U. Habra, Welco, Jigsaw Puzzle, Oh, Dreaming Choo Choo, um, Oka Jala Knight, Not sure how that one goes, really. Uh, and Jitterbug. So, yes, this is a downloadable expansion. Again, the last time we actually had a uh, they had an actual actual uh, DLC that included music for the game. Game was actually back in 2008. I had to look that up. So um, yeah, it's actually been about one to two years really since we really had any type of DLC see for Project Diva Future Tone. So it's good good to see you getting a little bit more love, love, even though it is technically new songs from a new Switch game. And, but that does tell me that, at least for the time being, Sega does plan to build off of this for any future Miku games that we get get from them. So, yeah, that's good. Alright, so that's all for Project, Mi uh, uh, Project Diva uh, Mega Mix and Project Diva Future Tone. Tone. If I hear anything about that Mega Mix DLC coming over to the West, you can obvi obviously expect it on the next game of save point. Uh, but... Uh, for the time being, we will be switching gears, gears to um, an RPG -E of sorts and a release date for an RPG series that has been announced to be coming to Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation, but primarily I'm putting this in the PlayStation category since that's where the last three games have been planned exclusively we, until um, the re recently the third installment just came to the Switch. And of course, I am talking about the Tales of Cold Steel series. So, as you guys know, there have been three installments in this series, but Tales of Cold Steel Tales 4 is finally, fi finally coming to Nintendo's, uh, uh, finally coming to Nintendo Switch, PC, and PlayStation 4, for very soon. But in specifics, this announcement has to do with the PlayStation 4 version, as this one's actually going to be launching this year, and the other two will be launching next year. So for those who are looking to get the PC version or the Switch ver version of Tears of Cold Steel 4, you guys are going to have to wait. Wait, but um, um, here's the information we have on Tears of Cold Steel 4 for PlayStation 4. It will be launching October 27th in the West. West, uh, in North American... America and Europe, and November 3rd in Australia and New Zealand. Zealand, and I will leave a link in the description below to both the latest trailer for the game and um, any other specific news related to it. To it. And as I said, uh, the Switch version and the PC, which will be available on both Steam and GOG, G will be available then. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears over to some virtual stars. Us. I'm pretty sure you guys know these if you've been paying attention lately. Lately to, um, well, I'll let the picture speak for itself, shall I? All right, guys. I just realized how long, well, how long I still have to go, so I gotta cut some of these short. So I'm only gonna be covering some more of the major PlayStation announcements, then head over to Xbox for some of the major announcements there, and finally Nintendo. Okay, so, as you can see on the screen, Napa Virtual Stars will be coming to the PlayStation 4 or, for, or very soon. Soon. In fact, not till next year, at the most. Most. Uh... Uh, so, uh, for those who don't know, Napa Virtual Stars is basically um, a crossover between both the Napa uni Mega Dimension Napa Universe, in case you've heard of that series, um, and and VTubers. 
No, I'm not just making that term up. Up, v you can even look it up. VTubers is an actual thing. Thing. I haven't even subscribed to a couple. A couple. If you want to look at my subscription feed, feed. I wouldn't lie about that. Um. Anyways, ways. Continuing. In, in. In uh, this game. Aim is going to be uh, going to feature a hack and slash gameplay style. Not sure wh in what vein, though, because hack and slash could mean anything. Will it be similar to Warriors? I don't know. No. Well, and, and the fun fact, it's actually going to be out in about two weeks in Japan. So if you guys can't wait, then you can get it in Japan. But otherwise, if you wait for the U U.S. version, it will not be coming over to the U.S. until 2021. So patience. Patience is a virtue here. <laughs> All right. All right. So next up, let's talk about PlayStation Plus. All right. So these are your PlayStation Plus games for July. We have NBA 2K20, Rise of the Tomb Raider to 20th Anniversary Celebration. And a bonus game, Erica. All available for available if you have PlayStation Plus. So, um, yeah. That's pretty much it. it. Alright, so now let's head over to Microsoft where we actually got a couple significant announcements involving um, upcoming stuff and a couple discontinues as well. Yep, you heard me. I hope you guys have gotten an Xbox One X, or if you want it, an Xbox Xbox One S All Digital Edition. Um, um because uh, Microsoft has officially announced now that they're going to be discontinuing the Xbox One X and Xbox X One S All Digital Edition ahead of the launch for the Xbox Series X. X. So, uh, but Xbox One S will still be continue to be uh, uh, manufactured and sold globally. There will likely be some stock left left for the C, uh, for the Xbox One S S All Digital Edition and the Xbox One X. So I would definitely recommend checking your retailers, tailors if you haven't already for those consoles, consoles in specific. Because I'm pretty sure after Microsoft gets its last couple shipments out, that's gonna be it. And so if you haven't gotten them already, then uh, step on it, on it. You don't have much time left. Right, we should probably move on to the next picture, right? <laughs> Give me a second. All right, guys, so the next thing we should probably talk about is Xbox Game Pass. We got quite a couple games coming up. So available as of right now, now, since the date for these two games in specific have already passed, on console and PC we have Folger, and then we also have Mountain Blade, which is only available on console. Then, coming in a matter of three days, days available for uh, PC and console will be Caution, and then Golf with Friends will only be available on PC. Then we have Grounded, which is an Xbox pre uh, game preview game, available on both PC and console. 
Ansel. And then also in addition to that, that we have no uh, on July 30th, we have, have Nowhere Profit available on PC and console. Then we have Tourist available, available on PC and console as well. And then finally, the one that everybody's been waiting for, Yakuza Kasumi 2 available again on PC and console. So be sure to look into that. In addition, for fans who probably have missed this, Endless Space 2, 2 uh, is available now on PC, C, E-Game Pass, and Halo 3, for those who are continuing the Master Chief Collection, for those who pre-ordered it, and, and have officially gotten the game, game, whether it be you actually buy it with your own cash, or or um, you have it through Game Pass, Halo 3 for PC is now available. In addition to that, we have Neon Abyss, which is available on PC and console. So, so, um, yeah. Oh, and a heads up. For those who, who need to finish up these games, these will leave, leave in July 31st, so I finish up if I were you. Ashes Cricket, Vime, and the Banner Saga 3 will all be leaving uh, Game Pass on PC and console console very soon on July 31st and that's two weeks from now so uh, if you haven't finished up those games I would recommend doing so ASAP and for those who have PC game pass you can pre-order the install Microsoft Flight Simulator although I should warn you ahead of time it's gonna be a pretty lengthy download oh so uh, just a heads up Alright, that's all for Xbox. Now let's head over to the Switch where I don't think we have really any significant news. As of this video's recording, Nintendo hasn't announced any news about Nintendo Direct, so we're either going to get Shadow Dropped, dropped like a Direct Mini, or it's not happening. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, what did I amount to anything? We'll see. But for the time being, um, I haven't did any news as of this video's recording. So, yeah. Um, but if it is, and if it is, does get child dropped, then I will do a lively action to it as soon as I get back from work. Work. So, yeah. That does mean I'll probably have to stay off of Twitter for the whole time I'm at work. Work until... Yeah. Uh, so, please, no spoilers. But anyways, continuing on, on, let's move on to Nintendo stuff. Well, we don't have really any significant news, news from Nintendo, but we do have two big announcements to talk about. About one third party, only one first party. And, that, and the first party one is obviously involving our Smash character, which if you haven't already heard, is... That's right, Min Min has officially joined Super Smash Bros. as our armed character representative. Now, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't really sure who was going to be in from arms, but I'm genuinely surprised to see it be one of my mains. It's kind of weird for the regal, but I'm not going to judge. Judge, Min Min is all fine by me too. But anyways, ways, um... Um, if you want to purchase her now, she is now available. And in addition to that, the Joker and Hero Amiibos are available to pre-order right now. Now, oh, they've finally started work on the DLC Amiibos, so I'm super duper excited. And also, I might be looking into this too much, but maybe they teased, teased that they're also also releasing the new Amiibos based off of some of the characters previous uh, uh, it's on the, uh, some of the uh, previous fighters new Ultimate Lenders. For those who don't know, when we first got our first wave of Smash Amiibo Amiibo um, Sakura, uh, Sakura and the team and Nintendo all produced Amiibo based off of the Smash artwork for 3DS and Wii U. 
you, which is what the Amiibos now compatible with Smash for all previous fighters, minus all newcomers, and was all based off of. However, ever from what Sakurai sounds like saying, it sounds like he's teasing that there might be n new Amiibo? Amiibo based off of these windows? I would die for another Sonic Amiibo, of course. Course, but I might be looking into it too much. Much for all we know, no, he m might just be trying to toy with us because I do know Sakurai loves to troll. Troll, but uh, and uh, yeah, I'll take the L in that case. Case, but hey, hey, doesn't have to speculate a little. Oh, anyways, the other other announcement again is significant because it's related to third party. Funny, so um. Yeah. And this has to do with our old Half Genie Hero Pal Shante. So, as you guys know, currently at the moment, there is uh, three console games that are available to play on modern day consoles. We have Pirate's Curse, uh, Half G Genie Hero, and the most recent release, released about two months ago, Shantae and the Seven Irenes. Although, if you want to be technical, technical, it released last April with Part 1. One on Apple Arcade, but I digress. That's, that was the whole thing. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, anyways, ways. So, that means we're only missing two Shantae games, games available on Monday consoles. Although, technically, VDS counts, but I'm not, not going to lie, it's showing its age. Uh, and that would be Pirate uh, Shantae and, uh, this side, Shantae Risky's Revenge, and, of course, the original Shantae for Game Boy Color. So, now you guys are probably wondering, wondering, does that mean, do, does that mean these games are getting get re-released? Well, I got good news and bad news. The good news, news, before you guys even ask, both Shantae Visky's Revenge and Pirate's Curse will be coming to Nintendo Switch. Yes, that is correct. You will finally be able to play all five Shantae games on your Switch. Which marks the second collection te by technicality. LD, on the Switch that you can play a full setup. If we ha have to say, Shovel Knight nah, is the first game to do so, although what is what I said by technicality Shantae is. Kind of the first because her games uh, were scattered across multiple consoles. Shovel Knight that was already going to have its collections coming, the rest of its games coming to Nintendo Switch, irregardless, got others because the Treasure Trove collection was coming. So that means, irregardless, the game for the rest of the games were coming. So, by technicality, Shovel Knight's technically first, but not completely. Uh, yeah, for those who don't need a better explanation, long story short, let's just say this game came from the Wii U all the way to the Switch. That's the simplest I can explain it. Ain't it? Ain't it? Uh, but, um, yeah, so you'll be able to play um, all, all five games on Switch this fall. Now, as for, um, the bad news, yep. Yeah, as you could probably guess, although Pirates Curse is getting an Xbox release since it's already on PlayStation 4 and Steam. Uh, um, the original Shantae is again following this trend, trend of Nintendo exclusivity, and will only, at least for the time being, be available on the Nintendo Switch. So, for those who want to play on Nintendo Switch, uh, for those who play on Nintendo Switch, congratulations. But for those who are on Xbox One, well, although I'm not completely set back by that, that 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 is kind of a bummer. Bummer, but hey, 
Hey, it seems like they seem to really be sticking for or with that uh, Nintendo Switch and Nintendo exclusively because when it originally came out, PlayStation 3 and Xbox Xbox 360 were available, but they didn't put it to that system, so I'm kind of shocked. Either way, way it, it's good news here regardless for our half genie here, and in addition, Extreme Sport will also be coming this fall. Fall. Another hot way for a tire. I don't. Sadly, I don't have any information about what a DuckTales Remastered or the other ones are, but as Way For It has said themselves officially on social media, you're going to have to yell at Bunny Napco, Nap, Napco in terms of a specific RPG from the GBA, I think. I think something Star Saga. Uh, or Capcom and. Good luck. Disney. It's me about DuckTales, LZ Mastered, so, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, wait for the originals only. He has kept cop, uh, as, uh, wait for has also been saying. Uh, but either way, it's good to see. Alright, now, before we finish up, I actually got some announcements myself from the Go Gamers cha channel that I wanted to talk about real quick. So, yeah, let's get into those. So just a small reminder, Culture Clue Central will be launching this week, I believe, leave on July 26th. And um, going live on this day, we'll have a couple videos videos going live. Uh, where to start for kids. Kids basically showing you where you can find the best cartoons for your kids and youngins. Youngins, if you're new to the world of streaming. I mean, and as a long time watcher of cartoons and educational cartoons, actually, yeah, that's shocking coming from a gamer, but I'm actually actually one that grew up watching a lot of educational cartoons. I watched a lot of PBS Kids, Kids, I watched a lot of, uh, uh, <sighs> Well, you could say I watched a lot of the major education on networks, and that includes obviously Nick, if you can't and tell tell by the logo. Uh, but yeah, so Culture Clue Central will be launching uh, July twenty sixth. So look forward to that. You might have already seen the the seen this with one of the videos I just recently posted on the channel, but I am. Finally able to cover Mania Mods once more. Managed to final, finally uh, get my Windows side working again, so I am able to cover uh, Sonic Mania Mods. This means the upcoming mods from both the Sonic Hacking Contest and Sage. So I'll be able to cover those in full again. Again, as well as, well, basically anything 2D or 3D for Sonic. Uh, basically anything, uh, well, Blade 2. You know, the usual. Um, but, uh, yeah, just wanted to get that small announcement out of the way. Now, in regards to other stuff, just give me a second. Now, in terms of other games, games I've been meaning to play, there's several other games I've actually been wanting to play for a while on my PC side. But I've had no ability to do so until now. Now, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So, I will be testing to see which 2D and 3D games I can play on my, um, Windows side. side, And hopefully, this me means I'll be able to cover a, a lot more. Now, um, in terms of anything else... 2D fan games are, and normal games are just fine. Fine, as well as anything 2D in general. However, 3D for the time being will not be covered unless uh, otherwise tested. Now, from what I have tested, it seems like anything uh, running just Unity seems to be okay. Okay, which makes a lot of sense. 
However, Unreal Engine has a heavy, heavy, heavy toll on my MacBook. Book. So, unless it's uh, opt uh, fully optimized and uh, not full screen, preferably uh, uh, fan game makers, makers and indie game make makers, please. Uh, it's not going to run on my Mac. Mac pretty well. <laughs> uh, this does me now. What does that mean specifically for official Sonic games? In terms of that criteria, Taya, I won't be able to cover Sonic Generations. I'm sorry, guys, but that that version of the Hedgehog engine either is a little too much for my laptop to handle, handle, or. My laptop just sucks for learning generations. <laughs> That's not to say I can't run it, of course. Of course, eventually. But just not now. Now is all. That doesn't mean I can't cover all of any official Sonic game, though. Though, as I said before, for I am able to run any of the 2D, so I can cover at least the classic Sonic and Sonic CD e games. Games. Well, and as for Sonic Adventure, Adventure and Adventure 2, well, I have that on Xbox One, so I don't really think I need to worry about that one. Heroes, I'll have to test once I actually get a disc for Sonic Heroes. So, uh, WIP. Um, let me see. Am I missing anything? Oh, and any of the racing games, I also have have, which is just Sonic, uh, Sonic and Sega also have racing, and Sonic also has racing transformed. From, I also have on console. Well, not the first one, but the second one. So, yeah, I don't need to worry about those either. Uh, Sonic for Episode 1 and 2, I have Episode 1 on Xbox, but I don't have a Episode 2, so I'll have to test to see if that one will work. But, um, in terms of testing, Testing for 3D games in general. This definitely means no Sea of Thieves. Thieves. I'm sorry, but I just don't think my laptop's going to be able to handle it. And, and the graphic card wise. Sea of Thieves is a massive multiplayer online game, and I really don't think my laptop's going to be able to take the toll, something like that. On top of that, even if I were to record, record my laptop would more than likely crash. Crash, so I can't handle something like Sea of Thieves. Thieves. Nonetheless, it was a totally private silver, of course. Oh, and those don't exist. Yeah. Uh, but irregardless, as, as a long-time fan of C E Thieves, I hope, hopefully, we'll get an actual computer so I can handle that soon. In terms of other games, if you guys have any other ideas for what I could do, do for testing or what games I could test. Test. Let me know. Just so you know, I am running a uh, MacBook Air from early 2014. So, oh, that is also said. Now you could say I should just upgrade. Huh? Yeah, if it wasn't a thousand dollars for the latest MacBook and even cheaper for otherwise, I would. Would. But there's no way Apple. Fi uh, fi uh, way I'm gonna spend that much on a new MacBook, MacBook with basically any upgrades when the one, the latest upgrade still works on my current MacBook, and two, two, uh, I basically get pretty much bunk for an upgrade. And, and I'm only gonna upgrade if I'm at. I absolutely 100% have to, guys. Guys, and that isn't anytime soon, thankfully. Okay, so, uh, yeah. But either way, continuing on, on, this does mean, like I said, I will, whoa, hold on a second, let me just switch pictures. Like I said, this means I will be able to cover upcoming Sage games and mods for 2020. 20's uh, Sage or Sonic fan 
Sonic Amateur Fan uh, Game Expo for short. For those who don't know, the Sonic Game Aim, uh, Sage or Sonic Amateur Game Expo for short, but is basically a convention mentioned where many Sonic fans or in nowadays indies, Nies and other developers gather around to share the latest on what they've been working on, whether it be a Sonic related project, project or a different project project nowadays, as we've been seeing more and more indies and other non Sega related projects have been heck we've even been seeing mods these last couple of stages, so Oh, I'm excited to see what the this lineup brings and it looks like we're gonna have a pretty interesting one one for this uh, year's stage, so yeah. Uh, but irregardless, continuing on, on, uh, we're gonna be going through several other, other stage, uh, other things before we wrap up today's game of save point. So let's continue. As you may have noticed, guys, uh, lively actions are. Officially back on the channel. Channel, thanks to a service called StreamYard. Yard, it will be my main reaction software from this point forward. For that, I can even invite you, uh, invite other people to join me. Join me. So, um, if you ever want to join me for a reaction, action like for either the Play Anime event, event or um, Xbox's uh, upcoming first party event. And showcase, uh, let me know. No, in advance, so uh, I can set you up. Up. Just so you know, you will need a working camera, camera and mic, just for this to go. So just uh, heads up. All right. So without further ado, we're getting to the end of this game of save point, and I have only a couple small things to announce. Now it's left. Yep. So uh, let's finish up. Up, shall we? Just wanted to briefly touch on a couple other things. So, more music clues play plays are on the way, including uh, a showcase of the first three zones for Sonic 3 Air, Air or Angel Island Revisited, which is a fan-made enchanted port based off of the Steam version of Sonic 3. Yeah, that probably didn't make a sense to a lot of you. I'll just leave a link in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Uh, then we have Exobite Chronicles 2, which I got from Ethan. My Own Sonic, Tokyo 2020. Uh, Streets of Age, Age the First Tree. Sea of Thieves is coming back. Um, let me see. Team Sonic Races is coming to the channel soon. Um, I will, uh, just like we did with Rocket League, I will be making my return to Overwatch ASAP, and so much more. And now, finally, one final announcement. Now, you guys probably remember a while back on the channel, I tested out a mod that added my own own dual mixes and mashups that I made from over the year, year is is based off of zones from uh from Sonic Mania into Mania. Well, I'm pleased to say that I officially have an official name for it. It should, if for it, Music Clues Mania. This will basically be be a sound only mod, basically adding in several mashups. Ashups uh, from me, me into the game. Game. I have a gameplay video of the first free zone, Green Hill Chemical Plant in Studio Opolis, up very soon, probably shortly following this video, along with uh, Ghost of the Shiba unboxing. Um, and yeah, that's about it. All right, guys, time to close this thing out. Alright guys, that's all for now. Thank you for tuning in to today's Game of Say Point. Um, over the next couple of days, I will be a bit busy, so um, please be sure to enjoy the content I get to, 
uh, give you guys out. I have some more information about that stuff coming soon. Uh, so, yeah. That's all for now from yours truly, DJ Music Clues. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Gamers Essay Point. And I'll have more info, and I will check back in with you guys in probably, hopefully, shorter than four weeks. Uh, because this took me a while. Uh, to recap more news for the summer. And then, obviously, tune in at the end of August for a get, uh, for a Culture Capture Summer Edition. Edition from both me and Ethan recapping all the big news that dropped during the summer from gaming. And a reminder once more, uh, Culture Crew Central launches later this week. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, this is yours truly, DJ Music Clues, signing off. See you guys later.